to get this. You remember when Howard Hughes, no one had ever seen him, and that, that guy met him in the <laughs> desert, and you didn't even know who he was? Melvin. Melvin. Yeah. Melvin. Melvin and Howard. This guy, no one has ever seen. Uh, let me introduce our special guest for the next half hour. Uh, raked in a record $7.5 billion for his fund last year by investing in financials, returning an eye-popping 132% for himself and investors. Joining us now in a rare exclusive interview, hedge fund heavyweight David Tepper, president and founder of $12.4 billion Appaloosa Management, who I've talked to. David, th uh, thank you for coming out. Talked about You're you welcome, a lot. Because the Short Hills Mall is the only thing anyone knows about Short Hills. And <laughs> you, instead of being in the you know, the canyons of New York City, you manage this money out at overlooking a parking lot near the Hilton at the, at the Short Hills Mall. And uh, I've talked about you a lot. I've run into you, but didn't know who you were. Um, you're kind of <laughs> like uh, Carlos the Jackal. No one had ever <laughs> seen, this, seen this man before. So it's what, like, what was said to you to get you to come here? Yeah. What was said to me? Yeah. yeah. You know, actually, um, I listened to Joe said always mysterious, elusive, yeah. at least this type of stuff. So yeah. I said, you know, why not come on? So it worked. It worked it, it good. Work. good. Although, right. although I'm a little concerned when you say you have chills when you see me. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to the men's oh, room together. No, 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 no. It's only in the in the in the nicest way. Uh, uh, all right. All right. Uh, we can talk. I mean, that's okay. No, I mean, can, I, if you know. How much you make last year? I mean, we can talk. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, I'll tell you what I what I think about. Every time I've looked at a, a mutual fund prospectus, it says past performance is not indicative <laughs> of future performance. And I think about Paulson and how he got famous and how much money he made. And then I look at his performance this year. What does it feel like to have that, that pressure on you year after year? And are you just smart enough to know what to do every year? For year sure. After? Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, look, I, my long-term record is is actually pretty consistent. And what is it's what consistent? Is, it's inconsistently consistent. It compounded at what? So for me or yeah. for my investors? Either way. For me, Both. probably like a 40%. What about and for And for investors? my investors, like yeah. 30%. I mean, David, we are talking now about not being able to do 5% for pension plans. Like, not, people are accepting 2.5% just to get their money back in 10 years. Yeah. How do you do 40 How many years is that, that 40 17 years. That's, I don't believe you. That's impossible. You don't believe no, I, belie I believe you, but it seems almost impossible to be able to do Well, that. actually, uh, Joe, we have, uh, in the office, we have three little pigs, <laughs> and we shake the pigs to see which way to invest. <laughs> if they land on their feet, we go long. If they're on their backs, we go short. That's it. There's no, that is easy? there a, an octopus or something? Like no, no octopus, pigs, pigs, three little pigs. How many asset classes are in your universe? Will you do anything and long or short anything, long or short any asset class? Yeah, actually, Appaloosa and Palomino are one set of funds, and then we have Thoroughbred funds. So Appaloosa and Palomino will do anything. Um, stocks, bonds. How much um, leverage? None. None? None. None. What do you need leverage for? You don't. You don't. You I don't mean, to do 40 percent, when you've seen the outsized returns in the past, some of these guys have used leverage. To, no, to we deliver. don't have leverage. In, we didn't have leverage in, um, in 2009. We don't have leverage this year. Um, you, 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 you saw that you know, Michael Lewis can write a book about a huge trade, and, and he can, it can be a bestseller. What did you see? How did you do it in 2009? What, what, what happened with buying banks at the beginning of 2009? What did you see? It in, was easy. It was easy. It was. Why? It was really easy. The government told you what they were going to do. Basically, the government put out a white paper. Um, I can't remember the exact date. Kashkari's paper? In March. It was a Treasury paper. Yeah. You know, you can't put out a paper and say you're going to, you're going to buy securities and not buy them. Even the government uh, has to be subject to the laws. So they told me they were going to buy Bank of America at, six, at a six handle. They told me where they were going to buy other stocks. Nobody believed them. The market kept going down. We actually did. So what we did is we didn't buy just stocks. We bought bonds. So we bought you know, uh, bonds are preferred, you know, at, at 12 cents in a dollar, 15 cents in a dollar, 20 cents in a dollar. And, um, you know, stuff went up. But couldn't it have been a situation where some of these banks had to get nationalized? That's why people not at that so point. much. Mm -hmm. Not at that point. Because you have to believe that the government's not above the law. Now, at that point in time, people were confused and they thought, that, I don't know what they thought. Because what is it, habeas corpus in the Civil War? Right. It wasn't that bad. Although the government had, did change its mind on many things. When it first said, this is what TARP's for, it changed its mind and, and redirected yeah, a lot of that the, money. It changed its mind with dealing with you the You can't put things in writing and say you're going to buy at a price yeah, and not do it. Tell the senior, that is security laws fraud. Senior, tell the senior holders just can't GM, do it. Right? Yeah, tell the GM uh, senior debt holders that they're not above the law. You know, the GM, G, I was a GM debt holder. So the, the idea was either, and we owned a lot of bankrupt bonds, so versus other people who haven't been in that position. And we kind of 
help strike that deal because it was either nothing or <laughs> something. And we generally like something better than nothing. And we're not going to do nothing just to make a point. <laughs> you know, what, am I, what am I doing? <laughs> right. My investors don't like that generally. But you still must have had to deal with the, uh, the uncertainty of Congress, right? I mean, there were some political variables that you didn't know, even with the white paper being out there, right? Like what? They told me where they were going to buy. They, I knew where the capital was going to come in. The banks weren't going to be nationalized. The equity could have been diluted to a certain extent. But I was buying equity at two and three bucks in Bank of America, and it was, they, they were coming in at six. So, so they're coming in at six. I got a big guy with a lot of money. I think they got a lot of money, right? They get a lot of money? The, well, they've borrowed yeah, they, a lot they of money. They get a lot of money. Yeah. They can borrow more, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, you know, I know I'm going to make money. So it was not an emotional strain. The, the point is, yeah, it wasn't emotional. It was easy. It's, sometimes it's just that easy. It's, you don't have to be, you know, is, you know what it is? Fair. That's F-E-A-R. Is that how you spell fair? F-E-A-R? Yeah. Fair. Fear. <laughs> See, I'm from Pittsburgh, so we have a little bit of an accent. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Fear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we're pretty unemotional when we invest. So it is what it is. Although last year was a unique time, or two years ago was a unique time when you started looking through all of these huge changes that were coming through. You've done this consistently year after year after year after year. So does that mean uh, well, deals like this come along all the time and you they, can see they them? They do. Look, we're, we're, for better or worse, we're a herd leader, okay? We're at the front of the pack. We are one of the first movers. First movers are interesting. You get to the good grass first, or sometimes the line eats you. So sometimes we have negative years, but most years we do well. 